Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I would like to welcome you to the second lecture of an eight lecture series on research methods from Allama Iqbal Open University. In today's lecture, we will be looking at applied versus basic research. We will also look at types of research, variety of research methods, and a criteria to see which methodology to choose from. Applied versus basic research. Applied research has no immediate application. For example, theoretical development of algorithms, mathematical formulas, comes under basic research. Applied research has immediate applications. For example, development of better application uh, communication systems, new technologies development for commercial purposes. So these are two important types of applied research and basic research. There are two major types of research methods based upon the level of control, non-experimental research and experimental research. Non-experimental research further is categorized in these three categories, descriptive, historical, and correlational. Experimental research is categorized in two categories, true experimental and quasi-experimental. Non-experimental study describes the relationships between variables, but this type of research does not test cause and effect relationship. Let's look at the details of experimental research. Descriptive research describes characteristics of existing phenomena. It provides broad picture of a situation and usually it serves as a basis for other types of research. An example could be a survey of software programmers to determine computer-aided software engineering tools. So this type of research is called descriptive research in which you do not conduct any experiment and this type of research basically describes characteristics of an existing phenomena and the variables that play an important role in that phenomena. The next type of research is called historical research. Historical research describes past events in the context of other past or current events. It also um, relates to the concept of primary and secondary sources of data. An example would be historical influence of Pakistan Software Export Board on software export. So this type of research is called historical research. Next type of research is called correlational research. Usually the questions in this type of research uh, aim at finding out what several events have in common. It asks whether knowing a one event can allow prediction of another event. If we knew one of the things, we should be able to predict the other one. But this type of research does not imply causation, that one event causes the second thing. It does not focus on that type of research. An example would be relationship between years of software development experience and programmer's productivity. So this type of research aims at correlational studies between one, two or more variables. Next type of research is called experimental research. And again, we said that there are two types of experimental studies, true experimental research and quasi-experimental research. And the basic purpose behind experimental research is to conduct and discover causal relationship, one thing causing another thing. True experimental research, researcher assigns participants to groups, treatment variable is controlled by researcher, and control of potential causes of behavior is done. So we need two groups in this type of research. One group that goes through that treatment that research is aiming to conduct. In experimental research, for example, we have two groups of patients. Or in dono patients, may say, ek ko, for example, hum cancer 
के ट्रीटमेंट के लिए मेडिसिन दे रहे हैं तो दूसरे ग्रुप को भी हम उसी तरह की मेडिसिन देंगे जो शक्ल में एक ही जैसी होगी ताकि अगर कोई बिहेवियरल इफेक्ट है उनकी बीमारी को ठीक करने में तो हम उसको कंट्रोल कर सकें तो दोनों ग्रुप्स जो हैं उनको यही पता होगा कि वो एक ही तरह की मेडिसिन ले रहे हैं बट वन ऑफ द मेडिसिन इज द एक्चुअल मेडिसिन वन ऑफ द ग्रुप इज गेटिंग द एक्चुअल मेडिसिन एंड द अदर ग्रुप इज नॉट गेटिंग द एक्चुअल मेडिसिन नाउ वी हैव टू लुक फॉर चेंजेस इन द लेवल ऑफ देयर ट्रीटमेंट सो दिस टाइप ऑफ रिसर्च इज कॉल्ड ट्रू एक्सपेरिमेंटल रिसर्च इन कंप्यूटर साइंस परस्पेक्टिव फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड आउट technology adoption we are developing a new software for which we want to find out how people behave when they use it in that situation we will develop two groups one group we will give them uh, the new software the other group we will probably not give them the new software they'll they'll do the way they have uh, always done their work and then we compare the productivity if productivity was to be measured so in this type of research the researcher has complete control of the environment and control of potential causes of behavior is very important second experimental type research is called quasi experimental research in this type of research participants are pre assigned to groups so we do not have any control over assigning people to one group or the other this type of research method is very useful when researcher cannot manipulate all the variables for example we want to conduct uh, research on employees productivity in the workplace by using software agents since our objective is to find out productivity in the work environment we do not have control um, on assigning people to different roles they are already assigned we cannot make up one person as ceo and the other person act as an accountant or the other person as software developer since we are doing it in a real time environment those people are are pre assigned to those groups so we do not have complete control over the environment that's why this type of research is called quasi experimental research based upon data collection method there are two types of research the first one is called quantitative research the other one is called qualitative research quantitative research involves large number of data crunching usually we need statistics to do this type of research for example we conducted a survey of programmers on some issue and we got results from let's say thousands of programmers or hundreds of programmers we need power of statistics to analyze that data similarly we are developing a new algorithm to increase a particular software's efficiency so we conduct different types of tests and we get a number of readings so results from a network latency efficiency test for a particular software let's say it could be agents uh, in a grid environment so that type of research is called quantitative research the other type of research the qualitative research method examines behavior in natural social cultural and political contexts usually results in non quantitative data for example an in depth interview with a ceo of a software house to find out management issues so in this uh, situation we might only focus on probably limited number of software houses so that we can have an in depth analysis so this type of research method or data collection method is called qualitative research this diagram shows information systems research framework and in this situation you see there is an environment is research factor and knowledge base but here relevance and rigor 
of research are two important aspects in any research method. For example, the research method that uh, the research study that you are conducting is it relevant to computer science or is it relevant to the situation where you actually wanted to conduct that study? And then the second thing is rigor, how much uh, rigor you have put into that research. Kitna hard work kiya hai aapne usme. Now you can do a lot of hard work. You can spend hours and hours in collecting data. But it's possible that the data that you're collecting or the analysis that you are doing is irrelevant. It does not have relevance to your field or your research study. So we have to balance between relevance and rigor. We have to make sure that both aspects of research are there. There are variety of research methods to choose from. For example, there could be research studies that are speculative in nature and they are more like commentary type research. One of the examples is uh, Nicholas Carr's 2003 article that was titled, IT Does Not Matter. And in that article, he made a claim that IT is an infrastructural technology, just like railway system or electrical production system. And since, and, and he compared it, that since those two types of inf infrastructural technologies failed at the end, investments did not pay off as much as people claimed, information technology is the same. It provides a mechanism for people to conduct business. So people should not invest heavily in information technology. And usually this, this type of research leads to huge controversies and debate. For example, one of the persons who responded to the, this uh, research said that yes, everyone now has access to same type of systems, same type of computers, same type of network. So one should not have uh, superiority on the other one. Or in business terms, it's called competitiveness. But the person who responded to this type of research, he said that if this was the case, then let's take an example. We have three competitors doing the same type of business and we give them free money, $100 million. Are you really sure that all three competitors are going to invest in the same way and are going to get the same type of results? In business terms, it's called return on investment. The answer is no. If the answer is no, does it mean that money does not matter? Or, take another example. You give 100 best graduates to a company, to two competitors. Are both those companies going to use their talent in the same way and are going to get the same return on investment? The answer is most probably no. Does that mean talent does not matter? So therefore, comparison between IT and uh, railway line or electrical generation system is not fair. So I gave you this example to understand that speculative or commentary type research leads to, sometimes leads to a lot of controversy. The second type of research is called frameworks or conceptual models. In this type of research, we try to develop frameworks and conceptual models for something. Library research, we usually go and study a lot of research papers and try to do some type of literature analysis. 
and this type of literature analysis focuses on what others have done so far and uh, it also analyzes that what future research problems might be there. Another type of research is called case study research and in case study we usually focus on one or few important cases. We could do a survey and usually survey is done with multiple people or organizations. We could have a field study or a field experiment. Field study or field experiment are done in the real life environment. For example, you want to increase productivity of software programmers, you need to conduct an experiment in the field, in the real office environment. But how do you do that? Before doing an experiment, you need to study that environment. That's where field study comes in. That leads to field experiment. Or there could be another research method called laboratory experiment. In laboratory experiment, usually true experimental research type things are uh, considered. Again, in that type of research, we will have two group of people, and two group of people will be uh, treated differently so that we can have difference in the outcome. If there is a difference in the outcome of group one and group two, we say that the treatment was effective or treatment caused that change. If there was no difference between the two groups at the end of the experiment, we say that the treatment did not have any effect. Another type of research is called design science research. In design science, we develop new artifacts of a software system. For example, we might write a set of code, or we might have executables, we might have different types of interfaces, so development of actual software systems falls under design science. And when is it called research? When you prove scientifically that your new artifact, new software system is better than others, or at least is different from others. We have just described qualitative type research. We can also have research on secondary data. Someone else has already collected uh, a lot of data and we just need to analyze it. And that analysis could, could be done in a scientific manner. For example, census uh, data is collected from all over the country. And we need someone to actually do that secondary analysis, analysis research study on that secondary data. Another type of research method is called content analysis. And its subse sada se example, jo hai wo uh, Quran ke tafsir, for example. What do we do in that? We have the original content, and we have different people trying to interpret it. So we are doing an analysis. What does a certain verse mean? So it's not only confined to religious affairs, it could be uh, done in other environments. For example, from computer science context, you might try to analyze uh, people's communication on email, for example. How do people communicate when they use email? And how do people communicate when they use telephone or when they use video conferencing? So that's where content analysis type research method is used. We can also have combination of research methods, more than one research methods. For example, we do qualitative study to find out what type of data do we need to collect or, for example, to conduct a survey. So we are using qualitative research to develop a survey instrument or we can uh, use any combination of these things. For example, field, field study and field experiment. Or it could be more than two research methods as well. This will be called triangulation. If you receive the same type of results by using different types of research methods, it adds power to your research and analysis. 
So once we have so many research methods, which method to choose for your particular research study? Here is the answer. That it depends which method to use in which type of environment. It depends on research question, the research model, degree of maturity of the research topic. If you are pursuing a research topic that has not been explored yet, no one knows about it, you need to probably conduct a qualitative type research so that you can do a, in, in, an in-depth analysis of that field. However, if the research field has been mature and a lot of researchers have already focused on that, you probably need to confirm the theories based upon previous research. So in that situation, you probably need to collect a lot of data and probably yeah. you'll choose quantitative type research. Similarly, it also depends upon external and internal validity. It also depends on prior research by others. And two last important things. Investigators' own interest and strengths. For example, if a researcher is really good statistician, choosing qualitative type research method might not make good sense. On the other hand, if a researcher is strong in writing, in observing and writing, probably uh, qualitative type research would be a better option. But there are different criteria for each of the research methods. And the last one, publication outlet and the audience. Where are you going to publish that research? So uh, different publication outlets have different types of criteria, and you need to keep those things in mind before going into submitting your research. We understand that without publication, research is not considered significant. So in today's lecture, we focused on applied and basic research. We discussed different types of research. And we also looked at a variety of research methods. We also discussed how to choose an appropriate research methodology for your own research. Aaj ke lecture mein hai tha. Agle lecture mein hum kuch aur cheezon ke saath aapke saath haazir honge. Ab aap se ijazat chahta hoon. Allah Hafiz.